Hello everyone and welcome back to another session of the Market Outlook series with me, Kavita Agrawal, the founder of EXP Invest. Before we delve into the charts of Nifty, Bank Nifty and the Intersector, I just want to wish all of you a very happy Women's Day. Please be sure to honor the women around you, your mothers, wives, sisters, everybody. It is extremely important to empower, especially the women, because even though the world is getting better. There is a lot of gender gap going on. There's a lot of wage gap. There is a lot of bias in the society and a word of encouragement can really mean a lot. And in order to celebrate Women's Day, I also am running a special offer about which I'm going to tell you as the session progresses. So let's get started with the three minute time frame of Nifty. Today, we are going to look at whether this rally, which we've seen from the level of 22,250, where you know, the Nifty just bounced right up to 22,500 and has been cruising there, whether this rally is set to continue or what are the charts trying to tell us in a very objective manner. So let's get started with the three minute time. So now you're able to see the three minute time frame on my screen and what I can notice here first up is when we tested the level of around 22,450, 400 ish, sometime back when the month of March had just begun. So when this happened, there was a negative divergence, which was witnessed. And this negative divergence took the index deeper down to the next support level, which was 22,500. Now, if you are part of my Telegram channel already, you saw that exactly at 12.30 p.m. on 6th of March, posted on my Telegram channel that Nifty looks very set for a fresh, strong rally and boom, we went up, we got resistance at exactly the level of 22,500 as it was mentioned. What's next? We see now that Nifty has been cruising and weaving around this resistance, extremely resilient from correction, but also not able to go up. While on the three minute time frame, there's not just the negative divergence, but also a negative green shift. What do I mean by that? That even the price has created a higher high, the RSI is not only created, has not only not created a higher high, but it is also staying strictly below the level of 60 on the level on the three minute time frame of Nifty. So this is short term bearishness. Moving on over here, as long as Nifty also stays above the level of 40 is it's continuous good news. There's also strong support coming in from this blue line, which is by the way, the 250 EMA. I recently did a small change on the EMA settings on my charts because I've been playing around with the EMAs and I've come across something which works a little bit better than the previous setting until I reach that stage of this totally works for me. So what you can also see here is the volume pumped up in the last few minutes as the price kind of slid down. So the three minute time frame is not giving us very bullish signals. Moving on to the 15 minute time frame, the resistance at 22,500 is again very prominent here. But at the same time, what I can see there is also a negative divergence on the 15 minute time frame. So this kind of reinforces the negative sentiment that we just picked up on the three minute time frame. And Again, we will look out for the support at the level of 40 because remember 40 is the RSI's support level for a bullish trend. So if this bullish trend is expected to continue, then the level of 40 should not breach. So you will see what I've done here. I have set an alert on the relative strength index of the 25, so RSI 25 period because 25 period RSI is what I use. So this way we don't have to watch Nifty like a hawk, we can do other things. And if the price really starts to go down, we have our alerts to let us know that, right? Now, I also have an alert set on this 22,500. So every single time this ray, which is drawn at 22,500 gets breached and the candle closes on it, I get an alert. Isn't that wonderful? Let's move down to the 75 minute time frame. And what? This is not very good news. So what do we see here again? When this upside happened, the volumes were promising. When this upside happened, the volumes were gone. And then what this looks like is just an extended fifth. What do I mean by an extended fifth? If you see the broader wave counts that have drawn, it looks like we started a new rally sometime here in June 22, based on this massive correction, which ensued between October 21 to June 22. And between this rally, right, we've already given five impulse waves. What we're experiencing right now, most likely is the impulse is a fifth wave of the fifth wave, which means we have pretty good chance that we are right now in this stage of the rally. So what happened in this stage of the rally here was at least the RSI on the 75 minute time frame was still giving bullish signals. But if you look at the RSI here, it's already gone to the bearish range, which is probably happening because the fifth wave is unfolding in a triangle pattern. So when that happens, it clearly beats the momentum down significantly. You will understand these concepts only if you're familiar with Elliott Wave. If you're not familiar with Elliott Wave, don't worry. Just understand that what we are witnessing is not very promising. And there is a lack of strong bullish momentum here. The volumes are clearly very absent. 22,500 is acting as a strong resistance. So I would say breaking the level of 22,500 with strong volumes is of utmost important for the overall market. Because from what we've seen, the three minute, 15 minute, 75 minute 
charts from the momentum perspective are not giving a good signal, neither is volumes. So let's go one time frame higher and let's see what the daily time frame has to say. So with respect to this fifth wave unfolding, the daily time frame also shows clearly that the volume participation is not as encouraging as we would like it to be unfortunately i'm sorry for being the bearer of bad news but i'm just being very objective also if you notice here there is a trend line passing through this price right now so that also is a reason to for us to worry and i believe that if a correction does begin here then we can retest the level of 21000 quite easily uh, 22000 so 21800 is where i believe the first support is going to be and if that gets breached then we might also see a correction as deep as the 21000 okay so the first support for this correction if it does begin if the level of 22500 which is the most recent low gets breached then we are expecting the level of 21800 or 21900 so what should your strategy be if the broad market does go into a correction number one don't let this impact you in a negative manner in the way like more than it should right be prepared for the active holdings that you have don't panic and don't start selling them just set your stop losses if you don't know what stop loss to set take the help of a consultant of a research analyst uh, you can go over to my website and raise a portfolio query request or portfolio cleanup request and i will tell you exactly what stop loss you should maintain and uh, if you already have stocks which are underperforming the market then maybe it's time that you part ways rip the mandate off and get rid of them don't panic is the bottom line in this now let's move on to the bank nifty chart and see what we've got there now let's go back to the three minute time frame and i do see that a negative divergence has also developed here but again we are the bank nifty continues to stay resilient continues to stay above the level of 40 which is a little bit promising i would say if we take a closer bit of a closer look what i do see is that the volume has been increasing the volume is clearly giving a bit of a mixed signal because over here it increased on the downside but here when the prices moved a little bit higher the volume also came back to some extent coming to the 15 minute time frame 15 minute time frame is not looking as negative as it was for the nifty so that is good the resistance of 47,850 got breached, which is again good, but we also have a trend line resistance right here at the level of 47,850. And if we see here, there is a small negative divergence on the bank on the 15 minute time frame, but I wouldn't really give it a lot of attention or importance as such. Coming to the 75 minute time frame, so what I see here is the volume spiked significantly in the banking, private bank sector as this leg of rally unfolded. And do remember that I've been talking about banks being good short term bets for a while, but I refrain from giving banking recommendations in my own trade together program for multiple reasons. So here what I see is that overall this decline when this happened, it happened against high volumes. And then even though the prices did get pumped up here a little bit, we did not really see a lot of consistent positive volume activity which gives me shivers to be a little dramatic and then here again we are in the positive range shift which is good we are trying to go a little bit deeper into the positive range but not sure if we are going to be able to sustain this move on the daily time frame i see there was a negative divergence and a healthy correction and we moved up so from what I'm seeing, the bank nifty kind of tends to look a little bit better than the nifty does and I would expect that maybe the bank nifty can Test the level of 49,500. So let's extend this resistance line, change this to 49,500. So it is a, it looks like a pretty realistic assessment based on the price activity that we are witnessing on the chart of Bank Nifty, the weekly time frame, not very helpful. So that's that about banks. Now let's move on to the favorite analysis, which is indices. But before I move on to the indices, I do want to tell you about my Telegram channel. So if you wish to connect me with me, the best way to do that is by joining my Telegram channel. So how do you join this channel? Pretty simple. Just hop over to your Telegram, go to your search bar and write trade with Kavita. Now make sure that you're joining the correct channel because as you can see, there are lots of fake channels with small variations in the name. Don't join them. Join the correct channel. How do you know which is the correct channel? Number one, look at the number of subscribers, match it. Number two, look at the content. You'll see a lot of posts about my webinars. You'll see a lot of posts about my stock templates, my stock recommendations. Most importantly, you will see this Women's Day special offer, which I'm running. So because I'm a woman and this is my business and I want to do my best to support other women and other people in general, I, I'm running this offer for three days where you can avail 25% discount on all my services, including and not limited to the Trade Together program, the Advanced Technical Analysis Training, which is an advanced training course for someone who seriously wants to pursue swing trading. And lastly, the long-term plan where I give you Technofunda based long-term recommendations with minimum holding period of one year and minimum target of 100%. On to the intersector chart analysis. What do I see here? 
I see that since the last week, starting from Monday, today was a holiday, obviously, Mahashivratri, wishing everybody a Mahashivratri as well. On the occasion of Mahashivratri, we don't have Friday's data, but what we do see here this week has been a little bit, okay, we do see a significant kink here, right? So let's just shift the chart to Wednesday and let's grab that low point and kind of study the charts so if you see from that low point right a significant churn in the sectors happen and this is the objective of when the market goes into correction and peaks to illustrate that or explain that a little bit better let's go to the three minute time frame right so we saw wednesday somewhere during midday there was a sudden like there was a bottom formation and a peak so whenever the bottom is formed irrespective of which time frame it is in because there are different traders following different time frames so whenever a bottom is formed there is sector rotation happening so what we see here is that from that low point onwards the rally that began it was actually led by metal and i have been telling you that metal sector is starting to look positive for the past more than two weeks now the fmcg sector has been slightly positive as well the it sector i think is getting prepped for making fresh positions so we made our so i have given the first call in the it sector in like maybe two three months for the first time and that in a very stable counter where we've in the past done a lot of swing trading and made good profits so the it sector is somewhere where you want to start analyzing for good opportunities the cnx consumption and commodity and the PSE sector they all continue to look positive and the pharma sector however i think even though the pharma and the healthcare sector have been moving up quite a bit some sense of profit booking can be witnessed there so you want to be a little bit careful to be honest the broader market doesn't look so good in the sense that nifty analysis doesn't give me a lot of promise but my capital is to be honest 100 percent invested in the market that is purely because on a stock specific level things are looking a lot better so i believe for the next few weeks probably the market is going to be a stock because market so you have to be very specific in your stock selections and this is when working with a semi registered research analyst can really be a game changer for you now the infra, the energy and the service sector, I think the rally is set to continue and so it is in the auto sector. But again, there are exceptions. It is not a very blanketed rule. Usually you'll see in the market outlook series when I discuss the intersector charts, I give a very blanket view on sectors. But right now I cannot do that even if I want to because the market doesn't allow me to do that. Things don't look good for giving a very envelope view. So that is the reason why, you know, I have to do what I'm doing. Now, moving on, let's take a look at your stock requests so if you want me to look at stocks for you then this is how you can do it i'm going to drop this link on the i'm going to drop this link in the i'm going to drop this link in the comment section so you need to open this form you need to fill in your name your whatsapp number the name the ticker name of the stock that you want me to analyze so for example if you want me to analyze geo financial services don't write geo financial or don't don't write geofin write nse colon geofin and then give me the cost price at which you're stuck at and a comment if you want to add a little bit more flair to your request. So when you do that, come right into my sheet here and I'm going to start analyzing this and help you out with your stock queries. So if you want to go to this link, just hop over to exp-invest.in slash stock request. Now, while you do this, while you submit your request, I can see that the response number is stuck at 49. I also want to tell you about my YouTube channel. So if you've been following my live webinars and if you want to get more value out of it, there are two ways to do that. Number one, you can hop over to my YouTube channel, just search my name, Kavita Agrawal, CMP, CFA, or search my company's name, which is EXP Invest, and you'll go to my channel. Here, you can look at the live sessions or you can look at the videos. So what are these videos? These are simply the same webinars, the same live sessions that I'm doing. I edit them and I make it available to you in a faster, cleaner manner to save your time. Or if you cannot sit through a 30 minute video, you can also go into the shorts where I break down the same content into bite-sized content and you can just flip through it. It's a lot faster, it's a lot meatier and it hits the nail on the head. So up to you, whatever you're comfortable with. And if you're not a YouTube shorts person, if you're an Instagram person, again, just search me, same content available on Instagram as well right now let's get into the responses and let's start answering your questions who is the first person to put the question in fastest finger first we've got mr kothari asking for tanla so he's holding from 900 so this tanla by the way is just a disclaimer it's part of my trade together program recommendation which means that i do suspect that a new rally has started in tanla from 29th of march and right now it is giving some correction so if we do a quick fibonacci ratio on this what we can see is that the stock has taken a 23.6 percent correction and is stabilizing it almost touch the 38.2 percent correction and if you do a past trade analysis or if you do a past price action analysis on tanla what you will see is that it has a tendency to reverse from the 38.2 percent correction level so that is what we see in my opinion this is the abc correction right? so this means that the wave is over and what we are witnessing here is probably the beginning of the new wave so you will see that this 
stop loss has been set almost at the low of the previous rally now even if the stop loss gets triggered what i'm going to do is i'm going to set a gtt right at the level of 907 to buy the stock there again instead and save the little bit of profit there in the middle so for someone who's bought the stock at a low price and already is sitting at a profit you want to set your stop loss straight away at this point what is this point draw horizontal line it is 890 Four. That's where your stop loss should be. And as for the target, a very conservative target for the stock at this point would be 1324. So that's for you, Mr. Kothari. We've got now asking for Dean Fork Services. So Nanda, please. For your repeat customer, use the correct format of the stocks. NSC colon and the name of the ticker. Now, so you want me to assess the momentum of this and all right, sure. So what do we see here? I usually don't prefer to trade in stocks like this one. Let's take a quick look at, oh, uh, look, that's exactly what I thought. See, this is, this is like, a, this was a small cap company. I'm not very good at, and I'm not comfortable trading in small cap companies because when you do active trading in the company, you want to be able to get in and out of the stocks really quickly. I don't think this is one of those stocks which has a lot of eyeballs. So active trading in this is not a very good idea. I do notice a small positive divergence on the 75 minute time frame and a buildup of volumes as the price has gone up here however i would call this stock a high risk stock because of the illiquidity evidently visible in the price activity here i i wouldn't do it but if you are eager to explore the stock then you can buy it for the long term at a level of 537 assuming you've looked into the fundamentals because i haven't i don't know the fundamental quality of the stock but if i were taking the trade for long term purely based on technicals i would wait for the stock to break out above the level of 537 with strong volumes on a closing basis and then set my stop loss at the level of two. My first target for the stock would be around 620, which again is the reason why I wouldn't participate in the stock because my risk reward ratio is way less than three. So I would say, Swananda, that Dream Folks Services is a no-go for you. Now, for Mr. Puneet, let's take a look at Happy Forge. So Happy Forge is metal fabrication, bullish on the metal sector, which is good. And this is a mid-cap stock still small for our comfort, but we can still do actually no, this is a small cap stock. If it's above 50 billion then it's a mid cap stock so this is indeed a mid cap stock i was thinking maybe it's 100 but it's actually 50 so it is a mid cap stock now i'm not happy with the charts i think the momentum is quite bearish also it's a relatively recently listed stock not a very good candidate for doing technical analysis but what i'm seeing is a downtrend in the stock and the 15 minute time frame suggests that the downtrend is pretty strong so you don't want to buy a stock like this it's better to always go for positive stocks so since you are holding the stock is 238 uh, mr puneet eight stocks oh not the price i would suggest that you get out of the stock as soon as the 15 minute rsi touches the level of 60. so what you can do is if you use trading view you will be allowed to have one indicator alert what you can do is you can go on to happy forge you can change your 15 minute charts setting to 25 and then set an alert on the RSI for 30, 60. When that alert gets triggered, get out of the stock. Don't worry about the prices. You cannot catch a stock at the high, especially a stock which is in downtrend already. That's the advice for you. Now I am going to move on to UFO. Jay, should he hold or exit? His cost price is 160. Just saying, making sure that I'm looking at the right stock. UFO Movies India. Let's see. This is, oh my God, this is a micro cap stock. Why? Why are you risking it? And that to a stock which is like significantly in a bearish market. And it also seems like you've bought the stock pretty close to the high. It's not a very good idea. Even though the stock is showing a little bit of positive activity near the high, this trend, which is in correction right now, right? If we go to the 75 minute time frame, we don't know where it's going to stop because it is already corrected almost 50% there's nothing stopping it so here if i have to give you a stop loss i cannot give you a smaller stop loss than 102 but if you look at it the percentage wise it's like a massive stop loss because the stock has already created a low breached the low so what you can do is if i have to see this one two one two three four five no this does not look like the right bottom this abc this is where the bottom started that is correct so so i don't think the stock should break this level of 61.8 percent so 125.7 is where your stop loss should be, Jay. So your stop loss, I will repeat, should be at the level of around 125. And since you are in a little bit of loss, it's up to you whether you want to exit the stock. Because like I said, such 
micro cap stocks are not a very good idea to trade in. But if you do want to hold on, then you can use the stop loss of 125 and the target of 230. Please, guys, this is not a recommendation for an entry. I don't know this stock. I'm purely looking at the technicals, assuming that this new bulletin which has started is going to continue. And because there is a gap, the price might come up to retest. This gap is what I'm basing my assessment on. In fact, I'm going to be a little conservative and I'm going to say that the target for the stock should be 200 rupees. All right. So UFO target 200 and the stop loss of around 125 at the spot price of 136.5. Now, let's take a look at Walk Pharma for Harsha. So let's take a look at Walk Pharma. Walk Pharma is a great pharmaceutical company, wonderful rally here. And if you see, it is, however, coming up on a bit of a resistance on the monthly time frame. But the, the volume with which this rally is unfolding is very encouraging. It tells me all signs of continuation right now. And yeah, all signs, everything, every indicator, everything looks great. And I think Walk Pharma is also really good momentum indicator. So you want to wait for the 75 minute time frame to beat the level of 30 before you make a fresh entry. But since we are analyzing the charts for Harsha and the Harsha has a cost price of 570 guys. Why do all of you purchase stocks after the rally? So 570, which is not so bad. What I would say is I think the stock might want to take a little bit actually it did recently take a little bit of correction and give a positive divergence so this is the beginning of a fresh new uptrend so pretty good chance the stock might give a few more jumps so what you want to do harsha is you want to maintain a stop loss at the level of 420 and from this stop loss of 420 you want to hold on to this stock for a minimum target of 970 960 970 is i think where a good target lies for this stock so that's what you want to do. So stop loss is around 420. Target is around 900. And the spot price at the spot price of four. Let's move to the like comments and let's check it out. So what I'm going to do is I can see that my team for some reason has not posted the link of expinvest.in slash stock request. So allow me to do that. So I'm sharing the stock request link in the comments for you to click on and Fill in the stock request. And if you're liking the session, please do give it a thumbs up. I know today was a market off. So very few people on Economic Times. My viewership is down to almost 25% of what it usually is. But because I am committed and I promise everybody that I'll come live at 5 p.m. on every Friday, I do come live at 5 p.m. On, on every Friday, even on Republic Day, even if it's a holiday. So I've shared the stock request link in the comments. If you've not had a chance to fill in the form yet, do so quickly so that we can take a look at your comments and help you out, right? Now, so what I can see is Swananda has another request for Zensar Tech, but Swananda is really bad at mentioning the right format of the stocks. Let's see. Um, we've got Zensar Tech IT. Huh. Negative divergence, loss of momentum, presence for strong resistance level. But we can see that we came down, we tested the bull range of the RSI on the daily time frame, and we've started to go back up again. But let me hide the... 500 EMA because it's distorting my analysis. No, the 2500. There you go. So what, what I can see here is that this was a pretty good point. This was a pretty good point to purchase the stock. And this is again a pretty good momentum mover. When I say momentum mover, what are basically stock whenever it comes down to reaches the level of 30 on the RSI becomes a good purchase if the daily time frame is bullish. So here what I can see is that the stock has just started a new trend. I want to go on the 15 minute time frame and for anyone looking out to do a fresh entry, just set up an alert at the level of 40 and wait for the RSI to retest that level of 40, 43. And then there you make a fresh entry instead of buying right to the top. Because if you buy here, then your stop loss is going to be around 12%, which is big. So Swananda for your cost price at 230, naturally you're a long term holder here so i wouldn't give you a very tight stop loss because i don't want to, you to unnecessarily miss out on the upside which seems to be unfolding beautifully there was this resistance but i can see that with strong volumes the resistance has been overcome and the price has also pulled back to this important trend line resistance trend line and now this resistance trend line has actually become a support trend line and it's beginning to head up so you want to continue holding it but you also want to set your stop loss in Zensar Tech at the level of 510. This gives a lot of breathing room to your holding and also allows you the opportunity to enjoy further upside. My target on Zensar Tech would be around the level of 885. I know it's a big target, but this is a big moving stock. So 885 is the target, 510 is the stop loss at a spot price one. We got Mr. Lokesh asking for IRCon. We're gonna look at IR for you at 242. 
again you purchase the stock pretty close to the peak but i am still very bullish on the railway sector and i think that if more upside un unravels in the market then we will see an upside unfolding here as well i do see that some resistance at the level of 60 is coming in at the rsi but the fact that up to the highest point the rally which unfolded on the 75 minute time frame or the daily time frame was accompanied with very strong volumes so i do think that the the strong bullish trend is going to return however we can never be too confident so please be sure to maintain a stop loss and for this specific stock it being a very volatile one i would suggest a minimum stop loss of 15 percent um, at the level of 188 for a target of I, I would expect this rally to get extended at least by another 20 percent for a target of 400 so 400 rupees is your target your spot price is 223.6 and the stop loss that I've mentioned for you is around 180. So we can see that we've hit the clock. So with that, we bring the session to a conclusion. Thank you so much for taking the time and filling in your requests. If your request has gone unanswered, don't worry. I will analyze the charts. I will formulate my response and my team will make it a point to reach out to you personally and deliver that response to you. Even if you don't happen to attend the live session, they will also give you the link of the session so that you can see my chart based analysis and make the most of it. So thank you so much for joining me on a market holiday and wishing you all a very happy Mahashivratri once again, wishing you all a very happy women's day once again i will see you again on wednesday in the let's get technical series now i used to do a session on monday but uh, now what i do is i do a session on sundays with all the members of the trade together program where i interact with them in a group i answer their questions myself i mentor them into becoming better swing traders so if you want to join that and if you want to learn from me if you want to swing trade with me then do join the trade together program and remember there is a discount going on the discount code is w that is w d a y 25 for women's day and you can use that on any services on my website if you want more information about that just join my telegram channel as i exit this call i am going to share the link of my telegram channel once again so that we can connect for sure i hope you've gotten the link of my telegram channel already i have mentioned it in the i have mentioned it in the comments for you so thank you so much for joining in i will see you again live at 5 p.m on wednesday in the let's get technical series until then namaste